Today, I'm here with Christy Furco, Executive Vice President and Head of Wells Fargo Home Lending. She has navigated a lot of change and challenges in her career, and today, Christy is going to share the secret of her success. Welcome, Christy. Thanks, Marcia. It's great to be with you. I always love being with the Empower family. It has been, first of all, I need to start with, it has been really wonderful to have your support since Empower started. And you're always willing to be on panels and give us your perspectives and today give us an Empower moment. So I do appreciate the dedication and time you've had to the Empower community. So I would like to start with asking you to share a little bit about your journey and how you landed one of the biggest jobs in our industry. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> so, um, first of all, at Empower, I, I'm grateful that you asked me to do it. I love supporting Empower. I love the sisterhood that has been created with women across our industry. And so I'm always pleased to be able to support you and uh, the Empower movement, uh, addressing issues that are on the forefront uh, for women in the industry. So um, I'm really pleased to be here. Um, so regarding my career journey, um, yeah, it's a it's an unusual one for mortgage bankers. Uh, you know, like many of us, I didn't grow up saying I want to be uh, a mortgage banker. I mean, I started in healthcare. I ended up at Pepsi for you know almost a decade, and then moved into the mortgage sector. 15 years at Fannie Mae, and uh, then at Flagstar, and now moving into uh, leading home lending now for five months at. Well, Fargo, and so it's really an unlikely story and a journey, but as I think about my career journey, it really is one that's been characterized by seizing the moment and taking advantage of opportunity. You know, there's that saying that says, uh, luck favors the prepared, uh, and I think for me, my mindset and my job, whether I was selling hospital supplies or in human resources at a plant for Frito-Lay, uh, or now leading you know, mortgage at Wells Fargo, it was always around, um, you know, just being a diligent learner and, you know, engaging myself in the work and doing the best that I could at the, the job that I did. But I always had this curiosity around what else, you know, kind of was the business. I was just curious about how things worked and how to engage. And so I always set out and met people and asked about, you know, what was their business like or how I could further what I was doing and how they could help or how what they were doing in another part of the business or in another industry could really um, help me with what I was doing. And I was always fascinated by that. And so I always looked for opportunity to kind of further and advance, you know, whatever I was doing in my role at the moment. And it just always, those new opportunities and new moments are here because people always look to me to say, well, she was so successful doing this and she didn't have the knowledge to do this. What if we give her something new to do and let's see what she would do with that? And so it always was about how do you embrace new challenges and take advantage of what's put before you. And that's really been the hallmark of, of my success throughout. Really great advice. And you have had so many impressive accomplishments and milestones in your career. I want to turn to the other side when things might not have been um, as easy. And can you share a time when your confidence was shaken and what you did to overcome that? Yeah, well, um, yeah. And you know this one well, actually, Martha. Um, you know, the moment came for me uh, in 2018, and I had just moved in. After 15 years and a very successful career at Fannie Mae, I just moved in to um, head up a mortgage at Flagstar. And I was about a, you know, a couple months into the journey. And the market in 2018, we all know how painful that was. <laughs> um, and, you know, I'm brand new in a role. I just set up a new strategy. And the market really turned. And I was struggling. We were not being successful. I was, you know, with 30% behind plan and budget, and I was just really struggling. And it was the first time actually in my career I had this real, um, you know, struggle with confidence where I, I questioned, you know, do I have the skills to do this job? Do I know the right strategy? Do I have the right team in place? Like, do I have what it takes to be able to be successful? And I'd always been 
in jobs over my head and I always found a way to grit through and be successful. But this one, I really was feeling stuck and it was a big job. I was leading a big organization and I was really having uh, a struggle of confidence. And we were at an NBA conference and we had just finished an NBA luncheon and you uh, and uh, a few other women, uh, we went to what I call my upper room experience now. Uh, but we took a glass of champagne and we went up there and I was sharing what I was struggling with. And I was sharing, um, you know, just, just how the business wasn't moving and I wasn't sure what to do. And all of you said, what do you mean? How can I help you? And we literally sat there and problem solved. And I told you guys what I needed. Uh, and you each delivered. And it was enough for me to, one, realize the sisterhood and support that existed. But it was a very valuable lesson of asking for help and how people come to, you know, kind of your rescue and are there to support you. And it created a building block for me to build from. In that, in that, in that moment that we were together, I saw possibilities that I hadn't seen you know, just an hour before, and I walked away from that feeling, one, just so loved and supported, but two, just feeling like I had a plan, and I just started executing on that plan, and we got to a really great place uh, in the business and ended up turning it around in, you know, kind of 2018, and then 2019 and 2020 have been for the record books, and so it ended up being a really successful turn, but it was a moment that, was just extraordinary and a a great lesson for me about asking for help and relying on the support of others because it's there if you ask for it. I think that's so profound. We find it so hard to ask for help and there are so many people willing to help. And I do remember that day and um, we did a lot of problem solving and I'm glad everything worked out and you went on to do bigger and even greater things, and we are so proud to have you part of this community. And you've been doing a lot of work at MBA, and you've been working and focused a lot on our efforts for diversity, equity, and inclusion. Can you share for everyone listening in on what you think is important for organizations who really want an inclusive work environment? What, what are some of the things they need to do? So what I think is important in diversity, equity, and inclusion just doesn't happen overnight. It is a very complicated business problem. And like most complicated business problems, it needs to be solved with the same level of fervor and focus that you would any problem. And so I think it's really about, you know, identifying someone who is accountable to really drive it forward and usually at the direction of, the CEO or the head of the organization, having that person at the top be absolutely clear and unwavering in their commitment to the progress of diversity, equity, and inclusion and changing the work environment so all people can come to work and contribute and be their best selves and really painting the business case for why this is important for their business, whatever that may be. The second is then you have to have an accountable leader that's going to create a strategy and drive that forth in the organization. And, and, you know, diversity, equity, inclusion is everybody's responsibility. But like with a business problem, you have to have an accountable leader that's going to create the strategies and really drive that forth in the organization. And then the third thing is then you have to have very tangible metrics over what you're trying to improve and measure those just like we do our monthly or quarterly business results, right? You have to you know, really understand where you're going. And if you're falling short, then what are the tangible actions you're going to put in place to correct that and move forward? And I think if we approach this with the business mindset that we do everything else, we will see so much more progress um, than what we've made so far. Right. Intentional. Intentional. Yeah, Yeah, I think that is so important. I have one last question for you, and it has two parts to it. So when you take the oath of office this October, you will become the first black chairman in MBA's history and only the fourth woman to hold the office. What does this milestone mean to the industry and to you personally? Yeah, um, it means everything, Martha. I I really am 
humbled beyond belief around this honor. And, uh, you know, my father was the first black head coach at a major university. In 1969, he was named as a head track coach at the University of Arizona. And so I grew up appreciating what kind of first meant. But now, you know, to be at this place in my career and being in a position in October to be installed as, you know, the chair of the MBA at like the top of my profession, um, it, it, it's humbling. It, and it, 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 I think about, you know, it, it, when people talk about you stood on the shoulders of giants, I didn't get there on my own. I had some amazing support along the way and people in this industry um, that have mentored me and supported me and gave me opportunities uh, to be in this place. And I think it speaks a ton about our industry and the place that we are in this moment in history. I think it's no surprise what we have just endured over the last year uh, with George Floyd and the pandemic and how racial inequity and healthcare inequity and social injustice has you know, really come to the forefront in a different way. For the NBA to have the first black and only the fourth woman in our 108-year history um, lead the organization just, I think, speaks to how advanced the NBA is and, and the fact that I'm becoming behind Susan, the third woman, right? So back-to-back, we have two women leaders. I just think it speaks to the forward thinking of, the Mortgage Bankers Association to recognize the opportunity that is before us as an industry and forging ahead and charting into the territory for us to lead the way. And that's what we do in the Mortgage Bankers Association. We believe the way for our industry to be able to show people what's possible. And this dream of home ownership and making that a reality for more people um, is is what we do each and every day. And it's an unbelievable privilege that we do in our day jobs. And I get to do that now at Wells Fargo from the largest platform or one of the largest platforms in the country. And so to be doing that and, you know, leading an organization like the Mortgage Bankers Association that's forging with um, partnerships in Washington with the administration, with, you know, FHFA and other, you know, HUD and other stakeholders, it just, it's an incredible honor, but it's also an incredible inflection point in our industry to say, are we recognizing the trends that are before us, right? The majority, uh, or the minority becoming the majority in the demographic front. And are we really positioning and ready our industry for the great long-term success of this business, which is to serve different homeowners and, and make this dream of home ownership a reality for so many more. And I'm excited about that opportunity. I'm excited to continue the great work that so many people before me um, have done. And I'm excited to do it with this great community um, of, of committed professionals who've dedicated their lives to, to this cause because it's a noble one. Well, Christy, in October, when Susan passes the chairmanship to you. I know this industry is in good hands. The MBA is in good hands. And your story touched my heart to know that you're following in your father's footsteps and really being a trailblazer. And I cannot thank you enough for your time and your insights today. Thanks, Marcia. It's always great to be with you. Take care.